This is the story of the Kola Super Deep Borehole, the deepest borehole ever drilled by humankind. 12 kilometers and 262 meters deep, a record that remains unbeaten to this day. But why did the Russian dig to such depths? What was their end goal? Why did they choose this particular location? And why did it take 25 years to complete the drilling? Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English, but, but dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Before we dive into the narration, we need to understand what a borehole is. Because when we think of exploratory drillings, the first thing that comes to mind is a vast abyss, a colossal cavity wreaking havoc on the landscape. But that's not the case, it's a hole about this size, measuring around 20 cm in diameter. What you see here is the topmost part of the borehole, which is currently inoperative. That being said, let's start from the beginning. The drilling operations began in Russia in 1970 on a stretch of land located east of Finland on the Russian territory known as the Kola Peninsula. And that is where the borehole gets its name. Why here? You may think of political or economic reasons. But no, the motivations were scientific or geological to be more precise. This particular strip of land, or better yet, this specific bit of Earth's crust, is considered one of the oldest of the planet. From a geological standpoint, the rocks found in this area date back to the Proterozoic era over 2 billion years ago. As we descend deeper, we encounter older and older rocks. Some may wonder if this is unique to this area, if there are no other locations on Earth with rocks this ancient. Well, yes, but they are few and far between. Why? Well, in most cases, these ancient rocks are buried deep beneath 10 or 20 kilometers of younger sedimentary rocks from the Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous period, just to name a few. In the Kola Peninsula, this younger sedimentary layer is missing. In other words, here we have direct access to the most ancient rocks. This is precisely the reason why scientists selected this location, as it presented an incredible opportunity to penetrate as deep as possible into Earth's crust. Let's talk about the drilling. The whole ordeal, as I was saying, started in May 1970. It took five years, believe it or not, to reach a depth of 7263 meters. At this level, around the 7 kilometers mark, a change in rock composition was anticipated and indeed confirmed. In fact, at that depth, geologists knew that they were transitioning from the Pechenga geological complex, comprised of sedimentary, metamorphic and volcanic rock, to the Kola complex, composed of much older gneiss and granite, essentially the crystalline bedrock. You should know that for a geologist specialized in deep exploration, reaching the crystalline bedrock is a little like hitting pay dirt. Beyond this point, reconstructing the geological history becomes an almost impossible task. Okay, so they had reached the bottom. Well, they wanted to go further, penetrating the crystalline bedrock, which is over 3 billion years old, to venture deeper into the unknown. One of the primary goals of this research project was precisely the in-depth study of the continental Earth's crust and the collection of new data on the composition and physical properties of the most ancient rocks. Additionally, the project also aimed to advance new drilling technologies and develop existing ones. Clearly, this research was crucial for industrial applications directly linked to the oil and natural gas extraction. Remember, this was the 1970s, the heyday of fossil fuel exploitation. Let's go back to the drilling. The initial seven kilometers were drilled using equipment similar to that used in the oil industry. But how does it actually work? I'm not sure if you are familiar with this technology, so I'll provide a brief explanation. You can imagine a drilling rig as a massive drill bit. At the surface, we have an engine to drive the rotation, allowing the bit to progressively dig deeper and deeper. How can it move further down? Let's envision a modular drill bit this time. Starting from the surface, you keep on drilling deeper 
adding one extension after the other to reach further and further down. These extensions are called rods, which are metal bars, ranging between 8 and 11 meters long. To get to 7,000 meters deep, you will need 710 meters rods to reach 12,000 meters, 1,200 of them, and so on. These rods, as we mentioned earlier, have a diameter ranging between 15 and 20 centimeters. As we said, from 7 kilometers forward, the rock formation changes, and so does the equipment needed. That's why they switched from a Euromash 4E a very common oil industry machinery to a custom-built Ural Mash 15,000 made to reach 15,000 meters deep, which was the initial goal of the project. The key difference between these two instruments is that in the former, all the rods rotated together within the hole, while in the second machine, the rotation occurred inside the rods, meaning only the motor at the top and the bit at the bottom were turning. And so, the drilling process continued. By 1979, the borehole had reached a depth of 9,583 meters. The next two kilometers took an additional three years to complete. Manly, because this was no longer an ordinary drilling process. It wasn't as simple as drilling through rock. The rock samples had to be taken without being damaged by the drill bit. This process is known as coring and it involves extracting small cylindrical cores of rock, in this case six centimeters in diameter, using specialized equipment. Obviously, coring at such extreme depths significantly lengthens the timeline. It truly is a painstakingly slow process. This was indeed one of the factors that contributed to the project lasting over 25 years. On a side note, I've analyzed core samples from boreholes in Russia, the UAE, Mexico, and India, but the truly amazing aspect of the Kola borehole is the sheer volume of cores extracted. In industrial projects, for instance in the oil sector, we may extract tens or at most hundreds of meters of cores for each well, focusing on the reservoir interval where hydrocarbons are present. Well, for the Kola borehole, a staggering 3,700 meters or cores were extracted from a single borehole. Drilling continued reaching 10,000, 11,000 meters deep. But on September 27, 1984, the 12K rods got stuck. A not uncommon complication. Unfortunately, the only solution was to cut and leave behind about 5,000 meters of rods. As a result, the drilling was restarted at a depth of 7,000 meters along a new path which is known if jargon as a sidetrack. The drilling resumed, reaching 8, 9, 10 kilometers deep. Here is where scientists noticed how the actual temperatures did not match the expected ones. When, in 1989, after several more years, they again reached the 12,000 meters mark, scientists encountered temperatures around 180 degrees Celsius, almost double the hypothesizes 100 degrees Celsius. This temperature, along with the heat generated by the drilling process, once again caused damage to the equipment. The drill bit deteriorated much quicker than anticipated. Not only that, but at those depths, and with those temperature and pressure conditions, the effort to keep the borehole open was increasingly challenging. Why? Because it tends to close down as a result of the pressure. It's like trying to keep a gap open inside a pot of boiling soup. How would you do it? To put it simply, it's very complicated. Here is a practical example to give you an idea of how difficult it is to dig at those depths. By 1991, the drilling had reached a record depth of 12,262 meters, the deepest exploration in human history. However, the project was halted and put on hold. Perhaps they could have persisted aiming for the initial target of 15 kilometers, but they were expecting temperatures of 300 degrees Celsius, which would have further increased the technological challenges. By this point, an economic element also came into play. In addition to the technological challenges brought forward by the increasing pressure and temperatures, the funds dried up following the collapse of the Soviet Union. In 1995, the Kola Superdeep borehole was finally sealed, marking the end of an era. 
Wow, what a fascinating story. I'm sure we are all wondering, what is the takeaway from all of this? What did we achieve with this 25 years long endeavor? Well, among other things, thanks to this project, we now know that the Earth's crust contains fluids. Water, to be precise. Yes, water was indeed discovered at great depths. At six to seven kilometers below the surface, microscopic plankton fossils were also discovered, leading to the identification of 24 different species of ancient microplankton. We also came to realize that our model of temperature variation with depth was not correct. We expected 100 to 120 degrees Celsius at 11,000 meters deep, and we found temperatures of 200 degrees Celsius instead. Since then, our models of temperature variations have been revised. We have acquired new knowledge. We have been able to study in depth the chemical compositions of deep rocks, and so much more that we won't be able to dive into for this video. But basically, in my opinion, the COLA project made us realize that getting to know the inside of our planet is one of the most challenging endeavors from a technical and scientific point of view. That being said, thank you very much for following us. I'll see you in the next video, always here on Joe Pop, science in everyday life. Ciao.